everyone, this is Matt T. Show and Intro Stats, and today we're starting a really important topic, the topic of sampling distributions. So we're kind of started beginning this unit on trying to figure out population values. How do we figure out population parameters? Uh, in our last video, we discussed that the term parameter refers to a population value, like a population mean or a population standard deviation while a statistic refers to a sample value, so a sample, uh, a number that's calculated from sample data like a sample mean or a sample standard deviation. So um, the question in this unit really is how do we figure out or how can we estimate population parameters? How do we figure out what's going on with millions of people? Uh, and it's very difficult. So let's get right into this. So the key question in this unit is really about how do we find population parameters, right? How do I find the population mean of millions of people? Or how do I find a population percentage of millions of people? Well, one of the ways we could do this is if we had an unbiased census. So if you had an unbiased census, so a census member was a collecting data from all of the millions of people in the population, you could really literally calculate the population mean and the population per, uh, proportion and have a pretty good, uh, pretty good number on that. So if you have a census, and this usually happens when you have a smaller population though, if you have like a small population, like, uh, what if we were just looking at students from just one high school was our population? Well, maybe I could get data from all of the students at that high school, and then that would be an estimate. I'd have a good idea of what the population mean average would be or our population percentage would be. But in the, out in the world, when you have a big population and you have millions of people, usually you can't do a census, in which case we have to rely on a sample. So what do we do? What, what if, what if we cannot take a census? I mean, how do we find population parameters when we can't do a census? All we have maybe is some sample data. Well, really what this is where we have to study deeper. We have to dig deeper into this. We need to know how random samples work and what random samples can and cannot tell us about populations. So, we learned in our uh, last unit that random samples are usually the best in terms of eliminating a lot of bias, but we could also have bias that sometimes will creep into random samples. So we're trying to get as unbiased a random sample as we can. But let me ask you a question. If you were going to study bears, would you only look at one bear? Probably not, right? If I was going to study baseball players, would I just study one baseball player? That's it? No, I'd want to study lots and lots of baseball players, right? So if you're going to study random samples, you can't just look at one random sample. That You, you don't really get, uh, get a good understanding of random samples by looking at just one random sample. But that's usually how data comes to us. Usually we only get one random sample at a time. And from that one random sample, we, we may never know what the real population parameter really is. So what we need to do here is we're going to, I'm going to set up an example for you where um, it, we, we do know the population parameter and we're going to look at lots and lots of random samples instead of just one. So like if I was going to study baseball players, I'd want to study lots and lots of baseball players. So if I want to study how random samples work, I got to look at more than just one random sample. I got to look at lots and lots of random samples. So the key of this, uh, this section that we're doing here is called a sampling distribution. It's one of the most famous graphs in statistics. It teaches us a lot about um, how parameters work and sample statistics work. So sampling distribution is collecting many random samples from a population, usually thousands. We calculate thousands of random samples from a population. And then we ca uh, calculate a sample statistic from each of those thousand random samples. So you really get like a thousand sample means or a thousand sample proportions, all from the same population. And then we put them on the same graph, or what we call a, the same distribution. That graph is sometimes referred to as a distribution. So putting thousands of sample means on the same graph or thousands of sample, sample proportions on the same graph is called a sampling distribution. 
And this graph actually teaches us a lot about some of the guiding principles of how we estimate populations. So let's get right into it. So this is an example I always do with my class. Um, I basically have all my students in, my, in the class. I had 30 students, I think about 30 students in my class. And I have them flip the coin, flip a coin 30 times. And they're going to basically calculate the percentage uh, or proportion of tails. So they, they flip the coin 30 times, they count how many tails they get, and then they go ahead and um, calculate the p hat or the sample proportion by doing the number of tails divided by 30, right? So, um, so for example, if they, if they, if they had uh, 16 tails out of 30, 16 divided by 30, they divide that in their calculator and get like 0.53 something, and then they, and then what they, what I'd have them do is put a magnet on the board. So this is be, this is kind of representative of what my class uh, distribution looked like um, when I do this with my classes. And each one would, each person would put a magnet on the board. And if another person had the same uh, value, they would put their magnet above these. So I had all my students do this twice. So they they actually flipped the coin 30 times, calculated a p hat then did another 30 times, calculated a p-hat. So I got a total of six, about 60 samples here and 60 sample proportions. So this is not a graph of one data set. This is a graph of 60 random samples, 60. Okay? So if you look at it, each one of these dots represents a, a proportion. If you notice, there you can kind of see what the proportions were. This would be referred to as a sampling distribution for sample proportions because each of these graphs, each of these dots represents a proportion, a p-hat. So think of it as 60 different p-hats, 60 different random samples. By the way, if, this were, if each dot represented a mean of a sample, then I, this would be a sampling distribution for sample means. So that's kind of how you refer to it, but whenever you hear that term sampling distribution, think lots and lots of random samples all on the same graph. Okay. Now, I picked an example where I sort of knew the theoretical population parameter. So the population parameter, the population proportion for tails when you flip a coin should be about 50% or 0.5. So if you guys remember population proportion, usually we use the Greek letter pi. So I would refer to as pi is 0.5. So I'm using an example where I do know the population value so that I can compare my random samples to the population. Now usually in the real world this is not the case. In the real world you get random samples but you don't know the population. But this is an example where we do know the population so that we can learn. We can try to figure out what samples can and cannot tell us about populations. So let's look at this graph. Let's answer a few key questions here. Did all the random sample proportions come out to be the same? So look at all these dots. Did they all come out as 0.5? Did all of the dots come out as 0.5? No, right? You can see it. I, I got some, when you did a random sample and I flipped a coin 30 times, some people got 0.3 or 0.2 or 0.8 or 0.7, 0 0.6, 0.4s. We got some that got 0.5. But we got a lot of variability here, right? The random samples did not all come out the same. They're all over the place. We're seeing sampling variability here. So they did not, all the random samples did not come out the same. Okay, they did not come out the same. Did all the random samples, uh, sorry, all the random sample proportions come out the same as the population parameter of 0.5? No, I mean I had a few that came out as 0.5, but I when I took when we looked at 60 random samples, a lot of the random samples were no were way off from 0.5. I have 0.8 and 0.2 and point, uh, 0.3 and 0.7s, right? I have I have I have a lot of variability here in the sample proportions. So the the random samples proportions are not the same as the population parameter. 0.5. This graph teaches us that. So the, the random samples did not come out to be the same as 0.5 in general. A few did, but most of them had were off from the population uh, from the population 
parameter. So this teaches us a very, very important topic, and this is actually key for all random samples. We call this the principle of sampling variability. Sampling variability. Random sample statistics will usually be very different than each other and very different than the population. I know what you're thinking. You're like, but I thought random samples were supposed to be good. Yes, they do tend to eliminate bias. They tend to be more representative of populations than, for example, convenience data. But that doesn't mean they're going to give you exactly what the population is. Random samples will usually be off from the population. And they'll also be off from each other. So if I take a random sample from a population, and then I calculate a, a proportion or a mean, and then I take another random sample, 18 seconds later, I'm going to get something totally different. And when I take another random sample, 20 seconds later from the same population, I'm going to get something totally different. Every time I take a random sample, I get something different, right? That's the key. Okay, I'm getting something different every time, and most of the time the random sample is pretty far off from the population. Okay? So that's a really important principle, and it also brings us to so another definition, margin of error. So margin of error. All random samples usually have a margin of error. A margin of error is how far off we think a sample statistic could be from the population parameter. How far off could our sample proportions be from the population proportion 0.5? That's called a margin of error. So in, in the, one of the key principles you learn from this graph is random samples tend to be very different and they tend to be off from the population. Now this brings up sort of an important topic that doesn't get talked about a lot. And it's something called point estimating. So a point estimate is when a point estimate is when someone takes a sample statistic and then uses it as an estimate of the population parameter. So for example, they may have no idea what the average salary of people in California is, but they took a random sample and they said, "Oh, the you know, the sample mean came out to be uh, $45,000 a year." So we're just going to...